Has the MCU been going on for too long, overstaying its welcome and peaking at Endgame, now only giving us mediocre content at best? Hello everybody, I'm OC Disaster, and in today's video, I'm going to be taking all of the Marvel Studios movies and putting them into my very own personal tier list, but if you stick around throughout the whole video, you're going to get some extra surprises here and there as well. Let's get into it. Starting with the most average movies in C tier, I have Doctor Strange at the very bottom of this list. Doctor Strange is not a bad movie, but it just has a lot of forgettable characters and moments. The villain is like barely in it, and then Dormammu's at the end, but we only remember him because of the memes. Dormammu, I've come to bargain. I don't think Benedict Cumberbatch is a bad Doctor Strange. I just think that it would have been fine if we kept his British accent. It, it, he does sound kind of weird with certain lines when he's doing his American accent. It's not the worst thing in the world. I just, this movie was just very mid to me. I tried re-watching it a few months back and I actually <laughs> fell asleep, which I don't think I can say I've done for any other Marvel movie, but it just like, it has some highs, but it's very bleak and very dry and I like some of the things they did with it, but when it all comes together, it just, it's just an okay movie. Next we have Thor Love and Thunder. I know I'm going to be already getting a lot of hate in the comments. I think this is an average movie. I think it's okay. I think it's absolutely hysterical. I just saw it a few days ago. It's not as bad as the internet is making it out to be. You do have to go in with the mindset that this is a comedy, which I, depending on how you take that, might dock it down a few points. It's a fine movie. They definitely overdo a lot of the jokes. There's usually a rule of three with jokes. Taika and the team kind of do like five or six times, which gets very annoying at the end. Some jokes got me like crying almost, but then they kept doing it. And I'm like, okay, well now it's kind of overstated. It's welcome. There are rumors that the original cut was like four hours long and they cut it down significantly. So I do hope something like the Taika cut comes out. I don't know. They're, everyone's sending like all this hate towards Taika Watiti, but I think Marvel Studios had a lot to do with it. This is a conspiracy theory. I don't actually know shit, but I, I feel like he didn't get as much as he wanted into this movie. Apparently, there was more gore scenes where he's, like, you know, actually god-butchering. And there was a scene where, like, Christian Bale was, like, carving off all his, like, religious tattoos. And that's why he's all scarred up later in the movie. But Disney's like, no, that's too edgy. You can't do that. So maybe we can get, like, a Reddit R, like, director's cut on Hulu or the adult version of Disney Plus or something like that. I don't know. This movie isn't as bad as everyone's making it out to be. People need to calm down. Like, seriously. Then we have Ant-Man. Ant-Man is funny. I like Paul Rudd. I think he's good in the role. This movie is just, it's just average. That's why it's in C tier. It's just like, there's not a lot to praise it for, but there's also not a lot to, you know, deduct points from it being good. I just think it's an okay movie with a pretty amateur villain. The villain is very like Iron Man 1 like, where he's just like the, the, the negative version or the anti version of our hero. And yeah, it, it's a fun time, but it's not like something that I'm going to keep rewatching over and over again. Next, I have Iron Man 2. Iron Man 2 is not nearly as bad of a movie as everyone makes it out to be. Yeah, it's not the best as MCU standards go, but it's not that bad. Yes, there's some outdated stuff with like Scarlett Johansson's like Black Widow being like over sexualized and stuff like that. But this movie is not the worst MCU movie out there like everyone makes it out to be. I have it as, as average. I remember when I came into the theaters and watched it, I enjoyed it. I did. As a kid, I did enjoy this movie. I rewatched it again a few months ago, and I remember having a more of a good time than I thought. And not in a, like, jokingly, oh, this movie's so bad, I'm enjoying it kind of way. Like, I actually did enjoy this movie watching it again. That's my opinion. If you disagree, let me know down in the comments, or you can just keep your mouth shut. I mean, one of the two options here. Then we have Captain America, the first one. I didn't like this movie that much, but it's better than all the rest so far on the C-list. Uh, I think Captain America and Chris Evans are a good fit. I was expecting more from this movie, actually. I was expecting more of Red Skull. I was expecting more of like a War War, was it, 2 kind of documentary style sort of thing. A little bit more gritty. But there are some very powerful scenes in this movie. Like, if I look back at any of these other movies besides Captain America on this tier list, I can't actually give you a scene where I was like, holy shit. 
But there's a scene in Captain America early on that literally gives me goosebumps to this day. And that's when he's not even Captain America yet. That's when he's Steve Rogers. He's at the training camp. The dude throws a fake grenade out, and then no one knows that it's fake, so everyone's running in different directions, and the first thing Steve Rogers does is he dives on that sucker. He does not care. He dives onto it and tells everyone to back up and get away, and that was just such a beautiful, powerful moment for the character. I was like, okay, like this this is amazing. And they made sure they had a scene like that before he got all jacked up to show that it's like this, the formula only enhances who you are. And so he was a great person before he was jacked Chris Evans. So I, I don't know. Like, it's very high out of the rest of these guys. I still didn't like much of the movie, but that scene alone puts it up there for me. Now, before I go into the below average category, so the D tier, I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page. This is all based off of the MCU only compared to other movies. What an average Marvel movie is, is actually probably slightly better than other movies like DC movies and stuff like that. I know I'm gonna get crap in the comments for that, just saying it alone, but I don't care, that's my opinion. So when I'm doing these tier lists, it's not saying that like below average is like, it's a terrible, terrible movie. It's like, no, compared to the standard that Marvel set itself, it is below average in my opinion. Does that make sense? If it doesn't, who cares? Let's go on. So below average at the very bottom, Ant-Man and the Wasp. I, this movie's forgettable. Honestly, I, I honestly cannot tell you one thing that happened in this movie besides um, the, the the wasp running in a kitchen and super small running over a seven. There was cool visual stuff like that, like when they're shrinking down, getting big. They played around with that a lot, but story-wise, kind of forgettable. The villain, uh, Ghost, uh, it's, what? Like, there was nothing to it. They introduced the quantum realm a little bit more, which I guess really held a staple for other movies so that was good but i didn't really like the fact that this movie was kind of just like there as like a support movie to you know feed into other and i'll get into that in a second i'll get into that when we get into the higher movies because ant-man does play an actual significant part and the rules in the ant-man movies do play a significant part in other marvel movies which i'm absolutely fine with but the movies themselves looking at them by themselves it doesn't really offer much in my opinion next we have captain marvel listen I'm all for the power girl, the the female protagonist kind of character. I'm all for it. Don't get me wrong. I'm not coming at this at a sexist angle. It's, the movie wasn't that great. Like, I, I don't think they played to the strengths of the lead. I don't think they played to the strengths of what they could do with the story to make it great. I do appreciate the gender bending. That's absolutely fine. It just, it wasn't that great of a movie. It's like, she's powerful, but the fact that she's so powerful is the problem because you never know, like, if she's going to be at state or at threat or anything like that. And, you know, we already saw her in a previous movie or two, and it just, we knew already what this was going to be. It was a prequel kind of movie situation, and it just didn't really fit for me. I mean, I enjoyed parts of it. But I was kind of just sitting there unimpressed the entire time. You can have strong female characters, but you got to do them right. And I really don't think this movie did it right. They didn't really dive into the what makes Carol Danvers special. Like, a complete contrast would be the Captain America. Like I said earlier, he dove one of the grenades before he had his superpowers. You're like, whoa, I, I really relate to this character. I can really see, like, where his heart is. With this, she's pretty much already, like, souped up the entire time. And you only get, like, the synthetic, like, or sympathetic moments, I should say, way late into the movie. Where she's flashback into when she was a kid and being told because she's a woman she couldn't do certain things. Like, that would have been great at the beginning. But we were already so far in, it's kind of like we, di we didn't need this anymore. So that that's my gripe with uh, Captain Marvel. You can disagree all you want. That's fine. B above Captain Marvel is Age of Ultron. Age of Ultron is like with Iron Man 2 for me, where when I rewatched it, I definitely enjoyed it more than everyone was hating on it for. Everyone thinks it's like the bottom of the barrel Marvel movie. I don't agree. I think that has some really good setup and really good moments. This was the one that got Joss Whedon to sign off of the Marvel movies, which, I mean, in hindsight, is actually really good because the man's a piece of shit. But... They were throwing too much in at him at once. Like, he had to do all these specific story beats to build out the universe. And I think that's kind of what got him a little bit uh, turned off from the project. I think it has an equal amount of slow and bad moments to good moments. But the good moments are really high and set up some really fun things. The, the standout is when Vision, like, picks up the Thor's hammer and hands it over to Thor without any effort. Just like, let's get going. 
everyone was just like, holy crap. And that was set up at the beginning which uh, with the funny party scene of everyone trying to lift Thor's hammer. And so the jokes were paying paying off. The inside stuff was paying off. And I thought that was nice. And Josh Whedon, a terrible person, don't get me wrong, he knows how to do character work. He knows how to have an ensemble and have them all have good relationships with one another. And I think this movie still has that. So... I, I, I put it a little bit above, you know, like that trash tier. I don't think it's as bad as everyone says it is, but it's not good either. It's still below average. And then at the very top of the below average is Multiverse of Madness. Multiverse of Madness, I saw recently, obviously, because it just came out of the time of recording. It's not that great. It's really funny when you look at it, but not in the right ways. It's not in the, like, the uh, Sam Raimi is a great director. I really like what he does, but a lot of people were saying for this movie, it's like he got to direct certain scenes, and then the rest was kind of just, like, Marvel taking over, and I completely agree with that. When Sam gets to take the entire portion that he's in, like, when he's re really able to do, like, the horror elements and the comedy horror elements in it, he, it, it's, mwah, it's great. I love it. I'm one of those people that did not mind the Illuminati getting popped off by Scarlet Witch. I really didn't. But there were things in this movie that really had me rolling my eyes. The the simping Doctor Strange, Doctor Simp. Um, it, it, it's it's ridiculous how much he's just like not over Christine and this forced, you know, kind of what you call it, kind of plot line of him and Christine, him not being happy. It was kind of just out of nowhere, and they just felt like they needed to throw something in there. Um, also, on regards to this, I just. Scarlet Witch got done so dirty. Elizabeth Olsen does an, an incredible performance, but I don't buy the, oh, the Darkhold is corrupting her, so that's why she's this evil. I think even with the Darkhold's influence, she wouldn't have gone as far as she did. Uh, she's very Karen in this movie, in my opinion. She's very, like, for my kids, for my kids, and it's not logically making any sense. And yes, you can argue that's because of the Darkhold, but Wanda's powerful without the Darkhold. That's what WandaVision showed us. So I just, I didn't buy the, the motivation, so to speak, from Wanda all the way through. And I think they could have done her a little bit better. Uh, even as a villain, they could have done some things a little bit better. So that's why Multiverse of Madness is at the top end of the below average D tier. Another thing was this thing was like hyped up. It's called the Multiverse of Madness. There is no multiverse. You can argue all you want. There is no multiverse in Doctor Strange the Multiverse of Madness. So... There you have it. Now we're moving up to the above average tier. These are movies that I think go above the average Marvel movie uh, quality, and I really do enjoy these movies. At the very end, Thor 1. I know a lot of you are going to be like, what the fuck? He put Thor 1 above Thor 4? And the answer is yes, I did. Now, this is what I'm going to say, and you can disagree with me all you want. It's fine. Thor 4 is more entertaining, but it's not as solid as a movie as Thor 1, which is the only reason why Thor 1 is above Thor 4. I enjoy Thor 4 for its comedy and, you know, its laughs and its visuals and stuff like that, but it's not, it's a messy movie. It is really messy. Like, it is messy. You cannot tell me that Thor 4 isn't messy. Thor 1, although it doesn't have those comedic beats, although it's more Shakespearean because of the director, it was a really solid, grounded movie that actually had good story beats and you could actually follow the story along and it wasn't as messy. So I actually like Thor 1 more than Thor 4. But that's my opinion. If you disagree, that's absolutely fine. You can let me know down in the comments. But if you're going to be mean about it, I really don't care. I don't take these things that personally. About Thor 1 is Thor 3, Ragnarok. Thor Ragnarok, I think, is better than Thor 1 and Thor 4. Thor Ragnarok is so good. Taika Watiti did a great job rebooting. It was kind of like a soft reboot of the franchise. It was a great breath of fresh air. Thor was hilarious. Chris Hemsworth really showed us that he could hit those comedic timings, and my girl Valkyrie was introduced. So yeah, Thor Ragnarok, I, I, I thoroughly enjoy this movie, and I definitely think it is above average, and it's better than Thor 1. Then we have Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, I'm trying to think of many complaints that I have about it. I really don't. It's a solid movie. James Gunn is an absolutely phenomenal director. Thank you guys so much for watching my content. How about you go ahead and comment down below, I survived the snap, if you made it this far. And please consider subscribing to the channel. It's absolutely free and it helps me out a lot. And give this video a good old like while you're at it. Now, once I get done this tier list, I have some surprises for you. So make sure you keep watching after I get through the top tier. All right, back to the video. So we have Iron Man 3. Iron Man 3, 
I enjoy this movie. I really do. I just think it's a little bit messy and they try to do a lot of twists that don't really need to happen. I'm fine with them making the uh, Mandarin an actual like hoax or gag or whatever. But there isn't a lot of Iron Man in it, which is a big gripe that I have towards it. It's a lot of Tony Stark, which I'm all for character moments and character pieces. But out of all the Avengers, I feel like Iron Man and Tony Stark are more connected and more together than the other characters in their alter egos. That's just my opinion. But all in all, the movie was pretty good. Above that, I have Black Panther. Black Panther is a great movie. The more I rewatch it, the more I kind of am a little bit less impressed by it, which, I mean, it makes sense. But Black Panther is a great movie. Chadwick Boseman, come on. He did an absolutely fantastic job, and I really pay my respects to him, and I'm really upset that, you know, we can't continue a franchise with him. Uh, and just him being alive, I think, is more important. But I have to I have to be honest. With all respect, Kevin, um, Michael B. Jordan stole the show, Okay. Like, they both did a fantastic job, but I think most people were talking about Michael B. Jordan at the end of this thing. Not because he's just hot, which is true, but because his performance was just... He was a great villain. He was, you know, he was pompous. He was driven, and I think that really carried a lot of the movie for me. And then we got to see the Black Panther world and the mythos and mythology, so... I really enjoy this movie. I just think that, you know, there were certain things that didn't, the visuals were kind of bad. The fight scenes weren't that memorable. So that's why it's not as high as some of these other movies. Above that, I actually have Spider-Man Homecoming. I'm a huge Spider-Man fan, if you haven't noticed. Spider-Man Homecoming was great. Tom Holland was great. There's a lot of people that don't like the newer Spider-Man movies, and that's okay. That's their opinion. I think it was a great take on the character. It was a great way to how to like blend it in with the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Everyone's complaining like it's too much Tony Stark, and it's like yeah, but that's the way they could make it all work together, and it got us a better trilogy than any other Spider-Man movies that we've seen before. I mean, that's an opinion, but that's what I think. This movie's great. It's funny. It's got a lot of moments in there, and I just really liked it. Um, I, I really did. Above that, I have Iron Man. Iron Man is one of those movies where it's like, it started the whole thing. How can it not be high? I know for some people, it's even higher on this list, but upon rewatching it a few times, I'm like, okay, this is kind of like a very safe movie, which they had to do, because like I said, it's the beginning of all this. They had to play it a little bit safer to make sure that they could actually get an audience in and set the stuff up. So that's why Iron Man is just above average. And um, you have, you know, the basic villain of the building the scraps in the cave, Obadiah Stane. It's not. It's not that big of a villain, honestly. It's not that big of a. Oh my gosh, he he twisted. You know, the the twist. He was he was the villain all along. Like that wasn't that surprising. But I mean, still overall, great movie. Rounding out the top of the above average is Civil War. I actually had Civil War way higher back in the day, but now I've become less biased with it. This movie is like a mini Avengers movie. It's it's great. It is great. It's a spectacle, but I definitely can see its flaws now that I've seen it so many times. It kind of drags in moments. There are a, a few moments in this movie that make it actually feel kind of long. I'm Team Cap all the way still. I don't care what you say. I'm still Team Cap based on all this. Uh, a lot of the ending was, I feel, kind of rushed and kind of out of reach. Kind of a little bit of stretching it. But for all t intents and purposes, this was a great movie. And I think we got great performances from the entire cast that, w that was in it. And it set up for a lot of conflict for future Marvel movies. Next, we have the A tier. So not only do I think these are above average, I think they are quality movies that I would rewatch all the time. So we're really close to that top tier, but we're going to go ahead and do the A tier. At the very end of this, I have, uh, what is it, Far From Home? Yeah, Far From Home, Spider-Man 2, Far From Home. This was such a funny movie. Like, I, when I actually think about it, I do think Homecoming's a little bit better structure-wise, but Far From Home had me laughing. It had me laughing so hard. Uh, it JD Smooth, I believe is his name, and then some of the other characters. Like they're just they played off of Infinity War and Endgame so well. It was very comedic, but like in a great way. The the movie opens up with people coming back from the blip from being blipped and they're popping in 
at places that they're not supposed to be popped into. Like, you know, they're doing, like, a prep rally, and the basketball team, like, pops back in or whatever, or it's the other way around, and they run into each other. They play it for laughs, but I think it was really great after such a dark tone of the previous movie of what happened. So I really did enjoy this movie for what it's worth. There were a lot of funny scenes in it. Jake Gyllenhaal did a great job as Mysterio, who was a villain we've always wanted to see on the big screen, and we actually got it, and they did his character pretty much justice. I know a lot of people are still upset that, like, he was involved with Tony Stark, and Tony Stark still is, like, a big part of this, but I, I don't care. I liked it. That's all that matters. Above Spider-Man 2, or I should say Far From Home, is Shang-Chi. Shang-Chi is so good and would be S-tier if they hadn't marveled up the last bit of the movie. What I mean by that is, like, the first and second act are so good. It's so gritty. You got the Matrix fight choreography going on. It's very grounded. It's very martial arts, kung fu movie. And then they kind of just throw everything at you at the very last act with big dragons and CGI fights. And I know people love that. I might be getting old, and that's why I'm not liking it as much. Well, I am getting old, but it's like... I'm starting to not appreciate that as much. I like more of a grounded sort of storytelling than these big whoa moments. So that's the only thing that I think is keeping Shang-Chi from S tier for me is that last act was kind of uh, a little bit all over the place. And then um, Aquafina, great performance, but I think her storyline doesn't really make sense for me. Uh, they kind of forced it in there. I feel like they could have done something else with the character. I don't know. There was a lot of things where it's just like, oh, now you're a good archer. Oh, and you happen to do the final blow. Like, stuff like that just kind of has me sitting there just like, okay, come on. We could have done something a little bit different there. But yeah, Shang-Chi is a great movie, and I really enjoyed it. Above that is Guardians of the Galaxy. Let me tell you, when Guardians of the Galaxy came out, I rewatched it like three or four times, which is not usual for me. After I see a Marvel movie, I usually wait a little while until I watch it again. Guardians, I, I saw multiple times. I really enjoyed this movie. James Gunn did an excellent job taking these ragtag no-named Marvel properties and characters and putting them together and making a huge franchise out of it. For those of you that don't know, Disney and Marvel actually did not have a lot of hopes with this movie because it was like kind of the first like wacky space adventure that they were doing. And so a lot of the budget was stifened down actually for this movie because they didn't believe it was going to be able to do much. Like the whole prison scene was all like practical almost. Um, so that way they could take apart the stuff and resell it in case the movie flopped and they needed more money. That's how little faith they had in this, but James Gunn pulled it off. The movie is very funny, very dramatic. The only real issue I have with this movie is the villain, man. The villain was was really a, uh, a letdown, Ronan. They didn't give him a lot to do. Um, they kind of had a lot of backstory about what he did to like uh, Drax's family and stuff like that, but it wasn't enough, and they were just really trying to connect it with Th Thanos. But yeah, this movie's still super, super good. So that's why I have it in A tier. Above that, I have Avengers Endgame. Yeah, I know. It's not S tier, guys. Avengers Endgame, to me, is not really a movie. It's more of a compilation of great Marvel fan moments, which I'm perfectly fine with. And the theater reaction and that whole experience itself was amazing. But when you actually look at it as a movie, um, it's not really a movie. It's kind of just like, whoa, look at this. And I think the time travel was a little bit uh, interesting, but not really necessary or what I really wanted to see them do with it. But that opening, man, that opening where it's like Thanos destroyed the stones and they come in and Thor just chops his head off. Like, holy shit. It's a fucking good movie, but I don't think you could appreciate it nearly as much if you hadn't seen all the other Marvel movies and you hadn't like been a part of this whole journey, which is the point. Don't get me wrong. It serves its point. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but when we're looking at it objectively as just a solo Marvel movie, it ain't going to make a lot of sense if you go in blind, if you know what I'm saying. Next, we have Avengers. Avengers 1. Avengers 1 is not nearly as entertaining as Avengers Endgame, but we wouldn't even be at Avengers Endgame if it wasn't for the success of Avengers 1. So it's kind of like the grandfather rule for, for it being higher up than Endgame. But also, it's a good movie. I've rewatched this several times as well. And just the character moments, it, it's really good. And I don't really have much flaws with it because they have Loki as the villain. So that really helped a lot too, was they actually had a decent villain for everybody to go after. So, yeah. Above that is Captain America Winter Soldier. Now, Captain America Winter Soldier, I used to put as my best Marvel movie I've ever seen. I would sing it praises all day long up and down. 
now I've objectively looked into it a little bit more. I've rewatched it a few times. This movie is great. When you look at it as a solo Marvel movie or just a solo movie in general, it is phenomenal. It hits the beats. It hits the punches. It has good moments. It's 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 great. It's it's phenomenal. But at the same time, it is kind of long and it does kind of overstay its welcome a little bit. I love the uh, genre bending of superhero with like spy thriller. I think that's really great. And they ran with it and the writing's good. And the Russo brothers did a great job directing and the actors did a great job. I don't know. It's just after rewatching it, I was kind of like, this is a great movie, but it's not. You know, I'm not going to tell people it's the best movie I've ever seen or it's the best Marvel movie compared to some of these other ones. Now we're going to jump down to the dumpster fire Marvel movies. So these are the ones that I think are really bad to Marvel standard. And because they're really bad, I think they would be just bad movies, right? So when you're looking at the Marvel mic microscope, it's like these are garbage. These are trashed here. When you're looking at the whole wide scale of just movies in general, these are the below average to bad movies. So first is uh, <laughs> Black Widow. Now Black Widow and Eternals are actually they're they're the same for me. They're they're both tiered at the same spot. I can't stand these movies. The writing's bad. It's dry. It's boring. I uh, Black Widow. I can at least follow the story a little bit better. Eternals. I was confused within the first five ten minutes. They tried to do so much with Eternals, and I feel kind of bad i think it would have been better as a disney plus show and giving each character their only like, episodes and stuff like that but they didn't they they thought they could you know go home and uh go big and go home with um the movie stuff is what i was trying to say i don't know my, my turn of thought went off uh anyway so those two are really bad i don't like them and if you do that's absolutely fine but they, they're doing our lead female protagonist so dirty so far in the mcu and i just hope they get it right eventually then the Incredible Hulk. Incredible Hulk is such a snore fest. There's barely any Hulk in it. And when he's in it, it just, it's very CG. I mean, it's an old movie, don't get me wrong. But I just, I don't know. I didn't really care for the character too much. I didn't really care for the story all that much. This was at a time where they already released a few Hulk movies and they all flopped. So it was already fatigued a little bit. I didn't like this movie. And then right above that, Thor to the Dark World. Thor to the Dark World is a shame. Um, <laughs> I actually only just recently watched it and it is as bad as everyone says it's, it's, it's bad. The villain's bad. Story's bad. The acting's dry. The visuals are very dry. It doesn't even make that much sense. It's a bad movie and it deserves the hate that it gets, honestly. So yeah, that is the trash dumpster fire tier for me. All right, here we go. The S tier, the top tier Marvel movies, in my opinion, that I think go above and beyond movie standards. First, I have No Way Home. Come on now. Listen, Spider-Man fan, and listen, I get it. The story isn't perfect, but come on. Come on. I know they added the multiverse and stuff as an excuse to get the other Spider-Mans in, but it, 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 it worked well. They did a good job. They could have just made it really cheesy. They could have really just, you know, given us a lackluster sort of story and moments, but they did a really good job putting it all together. Andrew Garfield, Tobey Maguire, they're not just cameos. They're actual, like, co-leads towards the final act. There's actually gripping emotional moments when Aunt May dies. It, Tom Holland actually acts in this movie. I mean, I'm not trying to shit on Tom Holland. I don't think he's a terrible actor, but I think people overhype him a lot. But in this movie, he actually does a lot with his range and everything like that. He's not just a bumbling, oh, you know, like kid he actually has moments where his character's like growing up and stuff like that and i love the whole concept of like the first three homecoming trilogy movies are actually like the prequel to the actual spider-man and now we're getting more to the like actual way spider-man's supposed to be i absolutely love that so that's why it is an s tier for me and then above that infinity war now infinity war you probably still need to see all the other marvel movies to really get your worth like an Endgame, but Infinity War is more of a movie than Endgame. Like I said with Endgame, Endgame is more like a string of compilation and moments, whereas Endgame, I'm sorry, Infinity War actually has like a story, it has a heart, 
It has these teams like building up and coming together. It doesn't end on a good, you know, feel good, big heart Marvel ending. It's like it's gloom. It's doom. We all had no idea what was coming when we first saw it in theaters. The theater was going crazy. Not as crazy as Endgame, but Endgame was like that's what their purpose was, was kind of like get everyone wild up. I just really love Infinity War. Infinity War. The more and more I watch it, the more and more I fall in love with it. There's just so many funny scenes and character moments in it and so many highs and very little lows that, yeah, I think it's the best Marvel Studios Marvel movie, in my opinion. Okay, so that is my Marvel Studios movie tier list. What did you guys think? Let me know down in the comments below. But as you heard earlier in this video, I have some surprises for you. Yes, we're going beyond the Marvel Studios movies. I will be covering the Sony Spider-Man movies and putting them on this tier list now. And then we're going to go and do the Netflix that I guess they're now on Disney+, Plus, but the original Marvel Netflix shows I'm going to put on this tier list. And then I'm going to round everything out with the Marvel Disney Plus shows. So if you want to keep watching, now we're going to do some extra stuff. All right, let's first start with the Sam Raimi Spider-Man trilogy from Sony. I said before that Tom Holland's Spider-Man trilogy is better, and that's only because of how bad Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 3 movie is. If Spider-Man 3 wasn't nearly as bad as it was, I think that Sam Raimi would still be the king of the Spider-Man trilogy. That's just my opinion. Spider-Man 1 is going into A tier, right in between Shang-Chi and Spider-Man um, Far From Home. So the reason why I have it here is because it's very campy, it's very silly, but it's still a great movie. Sam Raimi did a great job with it. I really do like this movie. So it's going to be sandwiched right in there between Shang-Chi and Spider-Man No Way Home. Next is Spider-Man 2. Spider-Man 2 is one of the most accurate comic book movies I think we've ever seen in live action on the big screen. So it is definitely going into S tier right behind Far From Home. Honestly, you can make the argument that uh, Far From Home wouldn't even exist if Spider-Man 2 wasn't so good. I would agree with you. So you, these two are pretty much in the same spot, honestly. It's such a phenomenal movie. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. It's still got that Sam Raimi campiness, but I honestly think it's better than the first one, which a lot of sequels, that's difficult to pull off. Next is Spider-Man 3. Spider-Man 3 is the situation where it's so bad it's funny, and so that's why I have it at the very end of D tier. There was a lot of studio interference with this one, and Sam Raimi even said he didn't want to do Venom because he didn't know much about the character, but because of the pressure and the big box office numbers that Spider-Man 1 and 2 did, Sony was like, hey, fuck you, Raimi, we don't care what you actually think, let's force this out. And I think this is actually kind of started Sony, Sony's like whole journey of shooting themselves in the foot from here on out. So yeah, this, um, this was a bad movie, and I think it was so bad that it kind of stops the trilogy from being the best of the Spider-Man trilogies. Now we're moving on to the Amazing Spider-Mans. I can't say trilogy because there was only two of them. The Amazing Spider-Man, I really enjoyed. I like the darker tones. I love Andrew Garfield. In my personal opinion, and I know a lot of people are going to disagree, I think Andrew Garfield is the best Spider-Man. I think he's funny. I think he's charismatic. Yeah, he's like a cooler take of Peter Parker, but who the fuck cares? Like, it's that version of Peter Parker they wanted to do. And I think it, I liked it a lot. And his chemistry with Emma Stone and their romance and stuff got me invested. It was a really good movie. I'm putting it above Thor 1. It is very much more entertaining than Thor 1. However, I think Thor Ragnarok is still a little bit more visually stunning and great than The Amazing Spider-Man. Once again, I'm in the camp of The Amazing Spider-Man 2 wasn't nearly as bad as people say it is. It's still not a great movie. I have it at the very average right before Doctor Strange. This was a lot of Sony meddling and stuff like that. Again, really trying to rush out Sinister Six, which kind of made this movie kind of a mess and sloppy. But I still liked a lot of it. I liked the tone shift. I like at the beginning... You know, Andrew Garfield's quippy and funny and being that Spider-Man we all know. And then as this movie gets darker in its themes, it becomes more serious and everything like that. I don't know. There's a lot of good and a lot of bad with this movie. So that's why I have it right above Doctor Strange because it doesn't bore me as much as Doctor Strange does. Next out of the Sony properties, we have Venom. Venom is an interesting movie. I think that if it was rated R, which I think was what they were originally going for, a rated R horror movie, it would have been a lot better, but Sony didn't have enough confidence in that, so they decided, hey, let's dumb it down, make it PG-13, so that way we can eventually cross it over with Spider-Man. Whatever that may be, uh, it ended up being a good decision because this movie still did really well, even though I think the movie is pretty bad. I have it right below Spider-Man 3, actually. Spider-Man 3, even though it's a terrible movie, it's still funny. It still has moments in it. Venom doesn't have any moments in it. I can't tell you one scene in Venom that... 
I mean, he he gets into a, a what you call it, a aquarium with lobsters, I think. But yeah, uh, Tom Hardy does his best trying to be Eddie Brock. I just I don't think Sony knows what to do with these spinoff characters. They don't even know what to do with the main Spider-Man characters, honestly. That's why they had Disney come in and help. So yeah, Venom is right there in the D tier list at the very bottom. Before I jump into the Netflix Marvel shows, I just wanted to quickly say that I did not see Morbius, so I cannot unfortunately put Morbius on this tier list. I uh, I heard it's really bad. The memes are fantastic. I would actually probably put it higher up on the tier list just from the memes alone, but that's not really fair. So I am sorry to disappoint so many of you out there. There will be no Morbin time in this video. That out of the way, let's go ahead into the Netflix TV shows. They are on Disney Plus, or at least most of them are now. I can't remember if this one is on there, nor do I care because it sucks. And that is Iron Fist. Iron Fist is in the F tier. It is absolutely terrible. I like it a little bit better than Thor 2. It has a little bit of better moments in it, but this movie, not even movie, sorry, this TV show is so bad. I would not recommend it. I, I really wouldn't. I'll give it a 2 out of 10. The visuals are corny and not that great. Uh, the guy who plays Iron Fist like refused to actually do any fight choreography. So it looks really stupid. And yeah, it just falls apart. And you can really tell that no one's heart was in this project. So yeah, Iron Fist, F tier. Next we have Luke Cage. Luke Cage, I actually enjoyed watching. However, the very end, the filler episodes really bogged it down and really started to make it go a different direction. Season 2 is definitely not as good as Season 1 either. I would put it right above Spider-Man 3. It's got better storytelling and all that junk than Spider-Man 3, but it's definitely just mid at best. But it's a TV show, so it drags out and it gets long. So that mid gets dropped down, if that makes any sense. I don't know if it does. I... I think the performances are great, but with the material, it just it didn't it didn't work out the way they wanted it to. Jessica Jones is right at the end of the average C tier. Jessica Jones ain't bad. I, I don't hate it. I don't love it, and that's why it's just right here in the middle. It's okay. It that that that's all I got for Jessica Jones. Punisher. Oh boy, Punisher got me so on the John Berthal. Like, holy crap. This man got very method for the role. Not to the like, you know super way where like he's actually killing people and stuff like that to get into character no nothing like that but the punisher is good season one is so good if it was based off of season one alone i would actually put punisher in s tier but because there's two seasons and the second season does drop the ball a little bit i can only put it in a tier right behind shang chi and before spider-man one i have rewatched punisher all the way through at least two or three times. I really like J uh, John Bernthal's performance. I like the guy who plays Micro in the first season. I really wish they would have brought him back for season two, but they decided to do something a little bit different, a little bit of a Last of Us sort of dynamic with this little girl. Well, she's not little, but younger than John Bernthal's character, Punisher. But yeah, Punisher, A, uh, a tier. Yeah, it, it's good. I would check it out if I were you. It's violent, it's gritty, it's gore, but it's got really good things in it and the filler episodes because netflix does this weird thing where you have to have 13 episodes per season i don't know why that was a thing i think you should only be able to have as many as you need to tell the story but yeah the filler episodes weren't terrible they weren't amazing but they weren't terrible like the other netflix marvel shows the defenders go right under venom in the d tier the defenders was supposed to be like this tv avengers sort of team up between all the netflix marvel tv shows it didn't do it well. It didn't do it well. I think it's like only six episodes, but like the first two, there's no team up yet. And the hand is the villain. And it just, it's a mess. It's a mess. It's not nearly as much action as I wanted it to be. It's not nearly as much character moments. It was a flop. It really was a flop. I think some people really like the Defenders and that's okay for them. But for me, it's very close to being dog shit. Uh, but you know, Iron Fist taste the cake on that one. Finishing out the Netflix Marvel TV shows, we have Daredevil. Daredevil is so good. It's so good. It's a slow burn. It's definitely something that you need to focus when you're watching, but it's gritty, it's dark, it's dramatic, it's gory. It's got everything in it, but it doesn't overstay its welcome, I feel. Season 2 is definitely the weakest out of the three seasons. Season 3 is actually better than Season 1 or Season 2. 
Daredevil is so good, and I'm so glad they're rebooting it or uh, bringing it back, I should say, and maybe soft rebooting it. I love Daredevil. It is so good. It introduces the Punisher in season two, which is why I also have it a little bit above Punisher. It's it's good. It's it's fantastic. But you have to have the patience for it and the brain cells to actually understand it. So if you don't have brain cells, I'm sorry. And if you don't have patience, then uh, I mean you're just the penalties. You're not gonna be able to enjoy. The beauty of Daredevil. Now we're going to go ahead and put the Disney Plus TV shows in this tier list. I do have to say I'm very disappointed with the quality of the Disney Plus TV shows. I think they're definitely pushing out too much and oversaturating it. I'm not even catching up on all of them. So I haven't even started Miss Marvel. So spoiler alert ahead, Miss Marvel is not going to be on this tier list. But yeah, I just, I don't know. The Disney Plus shows, they're either hitting or missing. But they're not just doing what they're supposed to do they're not consistent in my opinion i feel like the payoff isn't as big as it should be and then at the same time they are just kind of either doing really great stuff or just the most mediocre television i've ever seen anyway with that rant over what if is in d tier i did not like what if i think they played it very safe uh i think it would have been cooler if they did different like in diabolical the boys um it's like an animated side thing from the boys tv show they do different animation styles for each episode. They should have done something like this or what if, but they kept it consistent. Of course, it ties in somehow to the whole Marvel Cinematic Universe, which is annoying. They don't follow the rules, so it's like, how are you going to tie it into the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but then not follow those rules? The whole thing for the end of uh, what if is they do a team-up, which is also very stupid. I think we have enough of those team-ups. And uh, what's his face? Ultron gets the Infinity Stones and can like bend reality to his will. But then when you watch the Loki TV show, they're saying, like, the Infinity Stones mean shit outside of time and other reality. This Infinity Stones only work for that reality that it's in. You can't, like, mess up all the other realities. So, I don't know. It's messy. It's not the worst thing, but not the best thing. The episodes are so inconsistent. Some are really good. Some are really bad. Yeah. What if it's D tier for me? I'm being very harsh on it. But at this point, Marvel knows better and they should have done better. Next is Captain Falcon and uh, Winter Soldier. Captain Falcon? <laughs> Falcon and Winter Soldier. It's right above Doctor Strange. Uh, COVID messed this one up a lot, so it is kind of tough to critique it. They had this whole plot about, you know, a virus being sent out, and then unfortunately COVID happened, and they're like, we need to rewrite a lot of this because it's just too close to home. It's too too recent and people are actually dying and it would be tasteless if we did it so i do feel bad for the writers for the show they had to go back and do a lot of things differently the villain is really bad no one really cares about the villain and i, I think a lot of that had to be because of the rewrites unfortunately and you know time constraints and people's availability because of COVID. um but yeah i think all in all it's still a good tv show and it sets up sam's arc for being the next Captain America. It does that really well. Uh, I wish they did more Winter Soldier. He had some really powerful scenes. And then they kind of didn't pay them off. Like at the beginning he's like feeling really guilty. Because he killed this man's son. And you know he's got this immense amount of guilt about it. Throughout the whole entire series. And then he comes back at the end. And they don't even show you that scene. They don't even show you the emotional impact of him telling this man who he's been like helping out, that he was actually the one responsible for his son's death. He kind of just does it really quickly, and then it like cuts over or whatever. I don't know. They should have given that moment more time to breathe, and I probably would have even brought this up a little bit. But yeah, I think Captain... Uh, there I go again. Falcon and Winter Soldier was decent content, but it was definitely not the best that Marvel has given us. Next is Hawkeye. Hawkeye I really enjoyed. I think it's a great kind of like Christmas vibe to it. I like the relationship between uh, Jeremy Renner and Haley Steinfeld's characters. I think it was very natural. I love that they introduced Kingpin again and they brought in Echo. Normally I have gripes about throwing in all these characters for branching out the universe. I think they did it very tastefully in this one and there wasn't a lot of filler. I actually wish there were more episodes for this series, but yeah, it was good. I liked it. I think it was really good and that's why I have it above Thor 1. And it's in the above average tier list. This is Loki. I put Loki in between Daredevil and Punisher. Because I do think you start feeling a little bit of drag in the show. And there are a little bit of moments that are kind of just like, okay, like why are we doing this? But Loki, just the, the whole concept of it, the twist at the end, 
I think was great. A lot of people didn't really like the finale because that wasn't really like a big action moment. But you got that in the episode before with the, the variants of Loki. I really liked what it was building up to. I don't like how they built up to this thing and now they've kind of just let it hang until Loki Season 2. There hasn't been any follow-up for it, but I really want to see it. I think it's a very slow process that they're making this happen, which is kind of upsetting. But yeah, Loki's good television. I definitely think it deserves the, the A-tier spot. Next is the recently released Moon Knight. Moon Knight I have at the very top of the B tier. Moon Knight is really good. I really enjoy the character. I like what they did with it. I know a lot of people are upset because it's not really one-to-one -one with the comics. That's not what we're ranking this on. We're just ranking it on like how it is compared to all the other Marvel content we've gotten um, in theaters and on TV shows. Moon Knight's good. The very ending, like the last two or three episodes, it overstates its welcome. It's a little bit too crazy. With the mythos, the Egyptian mythos, and then also the CG can be a little bit wonky at times because it's a TV show. But for the most part, I really I really did enjoy this show. I hope they really dial it up if they do another Moon Knight TV show or if they just put him in the movies. I hope they dial it up because he's supposed to be more of like a Deadpool kind of character. Very violent, very like... I mean, they do have violence, but you haven't seen it yet because that's like teasing up for the Jake Lockley character. But I really want to see what they do with this character and hope they keep improving on it. But the show was a really good start, a really good foundation for the character. So Moon Knight is at the top of B tier. Last but not least, we have WandaVision. WandaVision, I think they actually shot themselves in the foot having WandaVision be the first of the Disney Plus TV shows to be released. Because although it's not perfect and the ending is pretty lackluster, once again, due to COVID, it kind of set up the wrong precedent precedent and the wrong standard for Disney Plus Marvel shows, in my opinion. I think it did so well, everyone was expecting this kind of standard for the, the following ones, and they couldn't live up to that. Now, there were things in WandaVision that pissed me off. Uh, the the Maximoff, what's his name? Her brother being played by... Uh, da, 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 da. How, am I for, how am I blanking on his name? Um, Peter... Um, Evan Peters. Yeah, there we go. Evan Peters' character and just making him huge balls or whatever the fuck they did. I don't know. They did a lot of, like, rug pulls for the sake of rug pulling. I didn't appreciate that. I think they were insulting the fans in a way when they did it like that. But for the most part, the mystery elements and stuff I think was really good. And like I said, I think it's the best of the Disney Plus TV shows that we've had thus far. You gotta keep in mind, I haven't seen Ms. Marvel, so I haven't put that on the tier list. And I haven't seen Venom 2 or Morbius, so that is why they are not on this tier list as well. Besides that, I can say that I've watched a pretty decent amount of Marvel content, and I want to know your guys' opinions down below. What do you think of my tier list? Let me know, but don't be a dick about it. Uh, I'm getting really pissed off with social media and like the comic book side of, and the comic book movie side of it. I'm just going to kind of go on a little tangent here. These are all opinion opinions and, you know, people's personal takes. If you get, like, visibly, like, agitated or you get, like, physically aggressive or upset when people have takes on movies and comics and stuff like that and you go off on them or you start throwing a fit, like, you need to touch grass and get a life. I can't, I can't stand it. It's really starting to, like, show on my timeline on Twitter. I think I actually deleted my Twitter for a little bit because of it um not think i did delete my twitter because of it for a little bit a huge thing is like shitting on thor ragnarok you can have not thor ragnarok thor 4 you can have your opinions but like you're doing memes about like killing taika watiti like grow up and then you know the other side where people are just like praising marvel for all the perfect things that it's done it hasn't done that much perfect like i only have two marvel studio movies that are s tier that i consider air quote perfect and even those aren't perfect just uh be open to criticism don't be that person that just, like, only your opinion matters, or if it's not one-to-one -one with the comics, then it's, like, it's dead to you. You can have that opinion, but if you're going to be hostile about it, or you're going to attack people for having a different opinion, you're a piece of shit, and you really don't deserve to have a voice. You can respectfully disagree with other people, but don't take it too far. So I wanted to throw that out there, and then last, because this video is going on for far too long, the MCU, in my opinion... It peaked at Endgame, and it is not getting better. It's only getting worse in the sense that they're not getting to their standards that they normally have. I think they shot themselves in the foot by having that standard so high. So anything they experiment with or try something new, it kind of doesn't hit that, that spot. 
so to speak. And so that's why it's getting more criticism because it's not really up to par what they normally do. And I'm nervous. I think we could really have a situation of oversaturation with the Disney Plus shows. I think we could really have an issue of uh, Marvel fatigue, superhero fatigue, if it hasn't already been starting to happen. Um, the last few movies, so like Shang-Chi I enjoyed, um, no, uh, Far From Home I enjoyed, and Thor 4 I enjoyed, but they, but the only, out of those three, um, Far From Home was, I mean, No Way Home, sorry, No Way Home was the only one where I was like, holy crap, you know, so it's getting to that point where like, we all want the holy crap movies, and we're getting mid, or just a little bit more disappointing than that so i don't know i think they need to dial it back a little bit in my opinion i think they need to you know not pump out so many disney plus shows agnatha hark harkness is getting a tv show doesn't make sense to me like that's kind of stuff i don't care for now you have to tie in the tv shows with the movies which means there's exposition uh it seems like marvel's cutting stuff now too with thor 4 it seems like they did a lot of like cutting and putting stuff on the on the shelf which i don't appreciate i i want movies to feel like movies and then have a marvel spin at the end i don't want it to be a marvel movie first and then um and then you know like cinema second i want it to be cinema first marvel second like give us more self-contained stuff that's what made the first few phases and all the way up to endgame feel so natural um because it was all standalone for the most part the first few movies were like their own self-contained thing with only like mid to end credits that tied everything in like a comic, which was great. And then as we started to expand, we started to do more like crossovers and stuff like that, which is fine, but it was a more natural buildup. Now it's just kind of all bonanza crazy with these arbitrary Marvel characters that no one's ever heard of, and they're in just for the sake of being in. And they're building up to, I guess, Secret Wars, but they're also building up to all these other different things, and it's so slow when we all have been spoiled so much. We already waited 10 years to get to Infinity War. We don't want to have to wait another 10 years to get to another big Avengers event. We're not patient enough for that, I don't think, anymore. Because we saw that you could do it. You did it. Congratulations. Let's just get to the stuff that we want to see and not have to slouch or like drag our feet through all these amateur, mediocre movies to get to the stuff that we want to see. I don't know. Marvel's a printing money machine, and they're going to stick to the formula to keep making that money because everyone's still going to see it because it's Marvel. But that's just my opinion. It doesn't really matter. So, uh, yeah, that's going to end this video. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. If you did, you survived the snap. Congratulations. I don't know. Um, this video took a while, so I'm going to go lay down. See ya. Now, this is a tier list. This is my opinion. Yes, you heard that right. My opinion on my channel. Feel free to disagree or whatever, but you're just basically going to... Just like guys, look out! Here comes the Spider-Man!